This episode of Brains on Games is about a game that requires creativity, abstract thinking, and the ability to think out of the box. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode we're going to talk about a game that's probably the one that requires more creativity than any game, just about any game I think I've ever played. Not too long ago, the folks at Story Machine Games sent me a copy of Rosetta, The Lost Language. This is a game that can be played by kids aged 8 and up. You can play a game in only about 15 minutes, and you can play it with two or more players. Let me tell you what this game is all about. You've got a deck of locations and a deck of inscriptions, and you shuffle those up at the beginning. One player is going to be the author. That's the person who's going to decide what the inscription means. So, for example, the ones that uh, we played with the very first time we played the game were these two. Now, I had the inscription organized in this way. I believe it's hard for me to tell because you're seeing it upside down compared to what I'm seeing. But the idea is the author has to think of a meaning for these symbols that relate somehow to the location. And the location cards are fantastic. They've got great artwork. I'll show you a couple of them here. You can see there's a winter scene. Um, you know, what could, <laughs> what could these locations possibly mean and how could you link them up to these symbols? This is where some abstract thinking comes in because there are some rules in terms of how you can translate what this is going to mean. The author is going to have this meaning card and a marker. So all of the cards, the guest cards and the meaning cards are, are wipe off cards. So you've got a dry erase marker. A couple of these came in the box, one for the author and one for the experts who are guessing the meaning of the inscription. So you're going to look at this location, you're going to look at the inscription and you can turn it any way you want. Like I said, I had it this way. And you've got to think of a word or, or a translation that's going to relate somehow to this. It cannot be something that's in the picture and you can't translate these into letters. It has to be a symbolic meaning. And this is where the creativity and abstract thinking comes in, both on the part of the author who has to come up with what the symbol means and on the part of the experts who are trying to translate it and guess what meaning the author put on this little card. Once you've dealt these out, you've started to think about the meaning, you're also going to shuffle up a deck of smaller cards that have abilities on them. You deal out two of these in the game and they're double-sided, so there's lots of different options that you might wind up with. And these are, are abilities that might help the players guess the meaning of this symbol. These are actually the two that we played with the first time we played the game. You can allow the experts to ask some yes or no questions about the meaning here, or the author can come up with some adjective that relates to this meaning. And that can be a little tough to do. So you are there are some language skills that are involved here as well. You're using your vocabulary and you have to know what an adjective is in order to be able to come up with a, a clue that will be helpful there. Once the author has come up with a meaning for the symbol, he's going to write it here with one of those dry erase markers. And then this card goes face down, actually on top of the box. The box here has a magnetic closure. I really like these magnetic boxes. Magnets, I don't know, they fascinate me. They have since I was a kid. But there's this little spot right here. And that's where you put the meaning card face down like this. When we played the game, these were the cards that I had drawn as the author. Now I looked at this and there's some little, they look like maybe fishing boats and there's some docks here, but there's some baskets. And then you see that there's these little homes up here, up at the top of the stairs. When I looked at this card, and it took me a, a little while, honestly, to think of how to translate this. One thing that I found about this game is that it gets easier both for the author and for the experts to play once they've played it a couple of times. And since each game only takes 15 minutes, you can certainly get a few games in in a short period of time. But I looked at this, these symbols on here and I thought, mm, maybe if we're talking about fishing here, maybe this looks kind of like a fish that's inside this square. Maybe this is some kind of an oven. 
Maybe this is a bowl with some utensils in it. Maybe these are cooking tools. And my translation for this symbol was I said, well, this maybe it could be a kitchen in one of these homes. So I translated this as kitchen. I wrote kitchen on the little card and put that face down in the box. Once everything has been set up here and the author has decided the meaning of the transcription, the next step is for the experts to try and guess what it is. And they've got 10 guesses. There are nine, I think. Yep, there are nine of these cards. The 10th guess is just a verbal guess. You don't get to write anything down. But these cards are not just guesses of the word. These are ways for the experts to get the author to give them some hints which is so important because how are you going to guess what this means from this picture? It's not really possible without some more information. These are wipe off cards, like I said, and what the experts are going to do is they're going to write a word at the top of the card and then the author has to do something with that information. Now, when we played, my son looked at this picture and he was thinking about fishing and I think he looked at this symbol and thought maybe it looked like something a navigator might use and I think he wrote... Um, navigation on his card. So I, can I write that upside down? We're about to find out. Navigation. So he wrote navigation and then he gives that to me as the author. Now there are two options for the author at that point. He can draw some symbols that translate this word or you can cross out the word if it's too far off from what it is that you're trying to get the experts to guess. So in this case, the navigation, that wasn't going to work. And then you move on to guess number two. You've got nine of these cards. You can divide them up among the players. You can leave them in the middle of the table and the players can work together and grab one whenever they're ready. Eventually you get to some cards that have some special instruction on the back. Number four says use an ability and that's when you use one of these powers. And the one that my son chose was this one, dialect. And I had to think of an adjective that was related to the word that I had chosen. Remember, I chose the word kitchen and the adjective that I picked was hot. That didn't really help him right away. I think the first thing that he wrote after hearing the word hot, I think he wrote sun. There's no sun on here. So that might make sense. The sun is hot. Uh, although this is a cloudy kind of a picture, so the sun didn't even occur to me as something that I, I might use to translate this. Eventually, he came to a guess that was a little closer, and what he did was he wrote at the top of the card, pizza. I'm not going to try to write that upside down. So he wrote pizza. Now, why would this picture make him think of pizza? I'm not sure, but I did think that this, this clue was close enough for me to draw a picture. So I did try to draw this little oven on here and I, I did my best to use my visual motor skills and my artistic abilities. Instead of drawing this little symbol that I thought looked like a fish, I drew a circle on the inside. And I did draw something similar here, except I made it more like a plate with utensils on it. And this was something that was starting to become helpful for my son because he was seeing some parts of the symbols repeated. I didn't draw the exact symbol, but this was supposed to be an oven. He talked about pizza, where are you going to make pizza, but in an oven. So I was able to draw that portion of the design. Now there's another ability that eventually pops up, which is once you get to guess number seven, well, once you finish guess number six, I guess, before you do guess number seven, you get to learn the fragment is what this says on it. Learn the fragment. And the fragment is the symbol that's inside this little corner piece. Each of the inscriptions has a little piece, a part of the design that's enclosed in this little box. And I could then tell the player what this part of the, the design meant. And I said, oven, okay? And now, all of a sudden, the pieces are starting to fall together. You see this, you realize that this symbol is an oven, there's something inside of it. Well, what could these possibly be? They must be bowls, where do you find those things? And with a couple of more guesses, he was eventually able to solve this problem. So you can see how there's a lot of creativity required to translate it. So much of this is abstract. And then you're doing some, not just using that vocabulary, 
but you're also using your drawing skills to start to make those connections. And you have to think, you definitely have to think about words and symbols in new and unique ways in order for this this clue to make sense in order for you to be able to figure out what could that word possibly be. It could be anything because you're not supposed to include something that's actually in the picture of the location. And that is Rosetta, the lost language in a nutshell. A quick playing game that really requires some creativity and outside of the box thinking. Thanks again to Story Machine Games for sending this game along. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, you can of course leave those below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go and previous episodes are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we are all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.